So I've been playing Raid for like somewhere north of about five years now. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I think I've got enough experience, enough salt on my skin for me to be able to provide a little bit of insight and, and uh, have this discussion with you guys. And part of the reason as to why I brought the, why I'm bringing this up, why I'm making this video, uh, is partly just, uh, you know, a personal interest of mine. And, uh, you know, I think it's also cool to talk about. One of the catalysts for this is my other channel where I do psychological deep dives into certain characters in um, video games. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and check it out. It's Beyond Horror Gaming. I'll uh, link it down in my, my description. But yeah, so because I've been doing this a little bit more often, I kind of started to look at Raid in the eyes of psychology. I do remember that Ash actually did a video kind of like this, talking about the, dam the dangers of, uh, of gambling. I don't think I'm going to focus specifically on that, but I do want to talk about the psychology of some of the players. What are the psychological traits? What are the psychological profiles that people um, who play Raid or invest or addicted, you know, whatever you want to say, what kind of players are playing Raid? Now, Raid Shadow Legends attracts a diverse player base, right? But there are certain psychological traits and demographic patterns that can be identified among its most dedicated players. And for most dedicated players, I, I think if you've been playing for over a year or just about, I, I think you could call yourself a dedicated player. You don't have to be playing for five, like you don't need to be playing from, I don't know, like 2018 to consider yourself a dedicated player. You don't have to spend $10,000 to consider yourself a dedicated player. But let's, let's go ahead and talk about more of the, I guess, positive, um, aspects of a human uh, a human mind when it comes to playing this game specifically right what kind of what kind of gamers does raid shadow legends attract i think the first thing that we can consider is strategic thinkers players drawn to raid often enjoy strategy and planning and this is this is true on so many different cases whether it's pvp um or if we're talking about uh doing clan boss you know, Deadwood Jedi, if we're talking about Hydra, you know, Nubkex is big in, in Hydra. You know, this whole crafting teams together to make, to do the most damage is something strategic. Or now, if we're talking about Doom Tower, or not Doom Tower, uh, Siege, th this is going to require a lot of strategy, right? Because, you know, you, you can only place up to three teams, right? And you have to choose the best team. So, you know, I have my one team here. I've got one team here again auras uh, arena auras don't work so you have to put your all battles aura so i've got one team here one team here and in the mana shrine i added another team so you know those are my three teams so my three three teams here there's the strategy involved all right the game's in-depth uh champion collection and team building appeals to those who like to optimize and strategize their gameplay you know if we're talking more than just doing whatever content is, is currently available to us so people who like to theory craft people who like to put teams together and test things out i know tairaku is is somebody who i watch who does this quite often also and um i i, I gotta say like there there was a time when i first started playing raid when i um uh, was really into putting teams together trying out different champions trying to see what works trying to implement some strategy and that was fun for me now i didn't take it too far just because i'm not that kind of guy because to me it's kind of like a puzzle if you know me i hate puzzles so i don't want to you know make myself or market myself as somebody who strategizes because that's just not me but i do know the player base is chock full of people who like to you know think tactically when it comes to games and i think that's pretty cool that's a positive because this game caters to those kinds of people, just like the game caters to people who are completionists, whether it's something as small as making sure your dailies are done or making sure that there's not a single fucking red dot on your on your uh, raid thing. If you're a completionist, you're going to love this. I personally, I love to-do lists. I, I, I thrive off of to-do lists. I grew up doing to-do lists for chores. 
So every time I see a, a list of things to do, I'm on it. Like, I, I got to get rid of it. I got to get it done. And so the game offers numerous champions and intricate progression systems that attract completionists who find satisfaction in collecting all characters and achieving high ranks in various game modes or, you know, it, it can it can range all right the range is either from doing your dailies your advanced quests all the way to uh all the before mentioned things here let me just find a single uh, pokemon to upgrade Let's... i was in the wrong section this whole time did i uh do this right oh let's just send there you go yeah so uh it's a completionist game you have all of these oh it was accessories all of these tasks that you need to do on a monthly basis and raid purposely makes it like this so you're constantly logging in every day every week every month and keeping you in even longer to do the advanced quests and even longer if you finish all your advanced quests early they want you to stay in for 180 minutes minimum now there is another aspect to the types of players that enjoy raid or there's like there's another set of players you know a lot of these overlap but i think the social player is one of these that i can i can talk about because like i've said before many times raid is um i i wouldn't be playing raid for as long as i have if it wasn't for the social aspect like i think the community within raid is just top tier and if and i think polarium knows this right i think if the community wasn't as good as it is i think many people would have left raid because think about how many other gacha games there are a uh, watcher of realms dragonair uh wuthering waves genshin impact no genshin's kind of a an iffy one but the point is the community is pretty fortified within raid and a lot of people are able to communicate you know just like in for example, the in-game chat is, it's not the best, but it's good enough. So you can hop into like English 2, for an example, and just start talking to people. Or you can get on Discord, get in a clan, you can talk to people in Discord uh, to your clan mates. Or you can hop into the YouTube section and have a non-toxic or toxic, toxic if that's what you're into, conversation in the comments talking about Raid. It, it's pretty, uh, you know, there's a lot of people coming from different backgrounds. And being able to come together to talk about the game in and of itself is uh, pretty good. The interesting thing is the demographics for Raid is kind of interesting. There are people here who are as old as I am, 30. And there are people who are way older than I am, up in their 60s. And I think it's interesting to see. Another thing, I know there's a lot of veterans who, who play this game. A lot of people who served in the military. Who play raid i i'm a veteran i serve in the military and i play raid and i think that's pretty interesting as well now when it comes to the uh you know the other side of everything we can start talking about you know after we get all the good stuff out of the way and if i miss anything you know please let me know but we can also talk about the uh the dark side of raid shadow legends right because yes you can have a completionist mindset and you know all those other things that we we talked about you know your, your desire to achieve things and get things done but when it comes to a completionist mindset there is another side of that that i didn't really touch on players with a completionist mindset strive to collect all the champions you know make them the absolute best that they can make um and uh you know be competitive right sorry i lost my train of thought there i was looking at this xeno xeno more more how do you say <laughs> i'm so i'm so distracted by this but yeah it, you know think about think about um mac chan right he was doing plat arena he was performing at the at the top level in plat and you know being competitive and he said himself he was spending thousands a month just to keep up just to become to just to stay competitive right this need for completion to be the best to uh this desire for achievement can drive many players as they have as they do as i have done myself to spend significant amounts of money to acquire 
you know, if it's a champion, if it's gear, or some type of in-game resource, it doesn't matter. The point is, the game is designed to pedal to the completionist mindset, to people with a psychological profile that fit um, this mindset. And, and, you know, by the way, guys, sorry if this isn't, like, um, coherent. It's kind of all, all over the place. I kind of just put this together in my head. I don't, I don't have a script or anything. Uh, for this like i do for my other videos on my other channel so if it's kind of like all over the place then um yeah forgive me i'm just kind of talking off the, the top of my my head here but yeah it you know aside from doing pvp well i mean i guess well aside from doing arena right because yeah we could talk about plat we could talk about live arena but there's also clan versus clan and now there's siege right or you know my most hated one is the champ tra the champ training or any type of tournament that involves you winning a champion, that is going to, I guess, pedal to the uh, so people with the completionist mindset, right? Because you want to achieve a certain champion, you want to acquire a certain champion, or you want to win CVC, or you want to win Siege. And so the best way to do that, unfortunately, oftentimes, is going to be spending a lot of money. So you end up being one of those people that spends a lot of money just to, you know, complete whatever task is at hand. Like, let's say you can't beat 12 7 Nightmare. Um, you might be so inclined to want to pay to get a champion, to get gear, whatever it is, in order to complete that. But I don't think, and you know what? I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna talk about what you should and shouldn't do. I'm just gonna strictly talk about what it is, and then you guys can. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about it, but I feel like this has been talked ad, ad, um, ad nauseum. We've talked to the stars about what you should and what, what you shouldn't do when it, when it comes to all this stuff. But yeah, the other thing about raid is it's a form of escape. And it's not just raid. There's a plethora of games out there that I play that isn't raid. And for me, video games has always been sort of an escape. Even as a even as a as a kid, you know, I played video games all the time because I wanted to escape the real world. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Uh, so if you're addicted to any video game, I think it's it's fine. It's a healthy form of escape. I think some might argue in moderation. I think it's fine. I'm not hurting anybody. You're not hurting anybody. You're at home being safe. You know, because you could be out at the bar, right, spending money on alcohol, or you could. Be outside doing something dumb and getting somebody else involved right and for some the game serves as a form of escapism from real life stresses and problems right we want to get away from the problems of life so we dive into these games and these immersive experiences that are in the game help us to you know uh, support that wish within us and raid does an excellent job at providing that immersive experience whether it's the sense of progress that you get from finally beating faction wars 21 full auto or um you know the temporary relief that you get from doing your dailies you, you know what i mean it provides a sense of escapism let me see what else i gotta do here uh, let me see let's do oh I, I almost didn't do my oh no i did okay here let's do Yeah, so uh, we talked to uh, being a completionist, we talked escapism, oh, social validation, right? Community and recognition. We kind of talked about the community aspect of it, but there are also people who like to play raid and like to be at the tip top because they want to be recognized for their efforts or they want to be recognized for how great their, their builds are or their champions are, and you see it all the time, right? I, I've done this as, as well. I mean, I don't really do it anymore, but like, there's still people out there like you can just you know, go into game chat or something like, oh, I, I do this much in Hydra, for an example, is like the first and foremost thing that I, I can think of. Many players seek that social validation with their in-game achievements. Like, oh, I was able to one-shot the spider with Nut. I, I mean, obviously I didn't do that here, but like, you know what I mean? There, there are people who, who can who can do that. We live in a world where people can do that. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just talking about why people are going to be inclined or uh, addicted to raid. 
you know, being part, oh yeah, being part of a top clan. Dude, when I was in Gods and Legends, um, I flaunted that shit. When I was in GNL, when I joined one of the top clans in the world, um, I was I was showing it off. I was telling my family. My family doesn't even know what the game is, but they were they were like, oh, cool. And I was like, yeah, I'm I'm in Gods and Legends, like a, a one of the best clans in the world, whatnot. Um, but yeah, like that's an in-game thing. Nobody really cares. And it's like, yeah, I went to. I went to in-game chat and I typed something in and, you know, you can see the GNL tag show up, but nobody really cares. I mean, some people are like, oh my God, you're in, you're in Gods of Legends. Now I'm in Roma Victor, which is um, old clan that I was, that I've been in. I mean, I, I, I left to go join Gods of Legends, but I was in RV and then I came back to RV just because the demands were a lot lower. Still top 50, top 30. We were 33 yesterday. We, we teeter and totter between 33 and 34. Man, this is still a top fan. And um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. Being part of a top a top clan, have a uh, top clan. I keep saying I keep I keep saying Tom clan. Being part of a top clan, having the rare champions, excelling in PvP modes. That is definitely worthy of recognition. It's definitely worthy of respect within the gaming community. But it also can further reinforce your your spending habits, right? Uh, let's see what I want to do here. I don't really want to... Oh, let's, just, let's just run... Here, we'll run some sand up. Um, and then when it comes to your addictions and your spending habits, the raid is able to manipulate everything so that we behave in a certain way. And we've all been culprit of culprits of doing this, of feeding into of feeding into this, right? And it's not our fault. One of the first things I can think of is that Raid has this, I don't know what specifically it's called, but it's like, think about summoning, right? Summoning shards, that's 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 a variable reward system, right? Players, uh, I if I pull shards, I'm going to receive rewards at unpredictable intervals, all right? And that unpredictability aspect is kind of the kicker there, right? Because this mechanism is similar to gambling, where the uncertainty of rewards keep players engaged. And we are more likely to spend money to speed up their chances. Or people are more... No way, dude. No way. Um, what was I saying? God, I, I, I have the memory of a goldfish, and I get distracted so easily. Yeah, so players... What was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about how, you know, uh, uh, like a few minutes ago, I was talking about how players want to progress and achieve. And one of the things that they they do is... Oh, nice. One of the things that they do is spend money and they try to up their chances to get a certain champion or, uh, you know, farm specific pieces of gear. Or if we're talking about summoning, players will keep buying shards in order to get that one champion that they want. It's unpredictable, but y you you feel so like engaged and in it the more you do it. And the other thing that you can layer on top of this or layer under it, however you want to word it, is FOMO. Especially when Raid does uh, the limited time stuff, right? Like... Um, the biggest thing for me in my entire raid career has to be the Nergigante Archer. Oh, the, look at that, 13, what was that? That was my new record, 13 and nine. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, I'm looking at these. It's it's so distracting seeing all the, these names. And um, when I went for the Archer, I was heavily invested in it. And it was even more so because I knew that there was a limited time champion that I would never be able to get this champion again. So I spent a lot of money trying to vie for first place. I ultimately didn't win. But Raid frequently uses and features limited time events and exclusive offers to create that sense of urgency, to create that fear of missing out. Just like this fusion champion, Packmaster. If you went for him, cool. But you have to admit that it, they implemented mechanisms of FOMO, right? The fear of missing out on a valuable champion or a valuable future champion that pairs with Packmaster 
this in and of itself drives players to make impulsive purchases right and it's not it's not just me it's not just you it, it happens across the board all around and the other thing that happens is the sunk cost fallacy i've talked about this before when you spend a certain amount you are more likely to want to spend even more based on the fact that you've already spent so much right it's a continued investment just in general players who have already invested significant time and money into a game they're going to continue to spend more to justify their initial investment think about how many people you've seen uh want to you know get rid of their accounts by like selling them you know i've seen it in game chat i've seen it uh, across discord people will want to sell their sell their accounts and then sometimes they'll be like oh you know what never mind i've invested too much or if, even if we're not just talking about selling we could just be talking about like wanting to quit raid how many people do you know who who've said they're going to quit raid but you'll also notice that the people who have spent money in raid are also more likely to not quit raid at all like they're going to maybe take a break but they don't ever really quit raid and a lot of the reasonings that i've seen that i continue to see is quote unquote i've i've spent too much money in raid i've, I've invested too much money into raid for me to to want to quit and they continue to spend even further and it justifies their their um you know their entire behavior in raid and you know there's a lot of people who end up going free to play after after a certain point like me personally i haven't spent any anything i haven't spent anything since nergigante archer after that i was like no i'm done i'm out it was too distressing um i didn't want to exactly abandon the game but i can see a lot of people who invest a lot of money who don't want to abandon the game and quote unquote lose their progress and investment um but yeah that's another thing the sunk cost fallacy once you're in you go deeper and it's just this hole and and sometimes people make the decision to stop spending or they quit raid and that's probably going to be the best investment because if you even if you don't talk about the money spent there is time right time is their most valuable resource you can't earn more time you can't share your time with like a loved one or a friend you, you can only waste it or use it right so however you use your time is however you use it so even if you're free to play you got to consider that's a lot of time spent trying to compete or trying to get something done as you know a free to player money helps to speed that process along but then you have to consider like okay well i earn x amount of dollars is it worth me spending this much time to try to do it free to play when i can you know spend this money and you know what i mean like we can go back and forth on it but yeah um and then there's also the social influence hearkening back to why i left gods and legends right because to be able to compete at that level that just wasn't me i had to spend money to be able to compete at that level if we're talking like cvc where you know i forgot what the minimum was but it was kind of outrageous it wasn't just the time sink but it was a money sink because i had to spend money to be able to to be worthy of the quote unquote quote unquote worthy of the gods and legends tile so uh being part of a clan or being peer pressured being part of an active clan or community can create pressure to keep up with everybody else you might you might feel compelled to spend money just to remain competitive or to contribute to your clan's success i don't think you should but it's a thing right because if everybody around you is doing it you are honestly going to be more so inclined to want to do it yourself especially during clan events or battles now we talked about all this stuff we talked about the psychological profiles of, of people who play raid who are addicted to to raid um some other points that i i want to you know hit on oh new new personal best um daily purchases some players incorporate spending into their daily routines uh daily routines or not, maybe not daily but like maybe weekly maybe monthly and um by this i mean they're buying in-game currency currencies or packs regularly to maintain a steady flow of resources this is something that is by design there is a reason why the energy cap has stayed at 130 for as long as it has and 
this is like I used to spend on a monthly basis and sometimes even more than that right I was buying the monthly gem packs every month I was buying the which one was it and now they have this here I was buying the where is it uh I was buying this yeah I was buying this monthly pack on a daily basis I was also buying this this mini mix pack that was something I was buying on a regular basis and this gem pack was something I bought I would also buy was it? wasn't this I was buying this on a regular basis too because it came with the energy and it came with the lego books and I always needed legendary books oh I was buying the world warrior circle pack whenever because sometimes I would stop spending and then this would show up this shows up after you don't spend I think it's for like a month and I would buy this every now and then but I haven't done that uh, anymore but there are still players today not that you know I'm not going to tell people how to spend their money but there are still people who uh who do this who who buy on a regular basis and again there's nothing wrong with it just stating that it is what it is let's do some uh phantom shogun here yeah so once you make the and again raid does this to make it routine for you because if you can get somebody on a routine and you can get them to routinely spend and make it part of their daily habits they're more likely to stay consistent with it and raid is exceptionally terrific at making this a thing getting players to spend uh on a regular basis is is just insane honestly and you know when, when you couple that with the oh new, new, new personal best for me also look at that 27 seconds uh, when you couple that with the high engagement rate, being in the game, participating in all the FOMO events like the fusions or, you know, whatever you have, it's a significant, not just monetarily investment, but a, a big time investment, right? Heavy spenders can often spend significant amounts of time in the game participating in, in basically everything Raid has to offer because it's on, it's honestly constantly churning out events after events after events and i'm not complaining about it because there was a time where nothing was going on in raid and players were complaining about nothing going on in raid and now things are always happening in raid and players are complaining about that too but yeah i'm just saying that this high engagement level uh with time also correlates with higher spending rates and this also you know i can talk about this right because i can tell you guys for sure when I was spending money in raid, I was also spending more time in raid. I was on raid a lot more often than I am now. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of on raid here and there, but I'm not on it as often, right? When I stopped spending money, I also found myself kind of pulling back from this and playing a bunch of other games and, you know, hanging out with my wife more, doing other things. Now, part of the reason why I was buying while I was making purchases, immediate gratification, right? And again, we're talking about the completionist mindset, right? This is a perfect storm. Everything I've talked about is the perfect storm. And I'm probably one of the best examples, um, best examples because I can speak on this uh, first, first person account, right? I have a completionist mindset and I want wanted immediate gratification. So I would do uh, impulse buying or when things got competitive just like in the Nergigante Archer um, event I was impulse buying I wanted that immediate gratification to get those points and the game the game's design encourages impulse buying by offering everything in the shop immediately and then they shove it in your face every time you try to do something you get like seven pop-ups right so players seeking instant gratification are more likely to make spontaneous purchases to enhance their gameplay experience, right? The game is a lot more fun. And I remember I was talking to uh, HWZ. I think, uh, uh, you know, I did a collab with him and we talked about it. And I, I think briefly I mentioned it, like the game is a lot more fun when you're spending. When you're spending money and, and you you have all the resources and you can, you can do everything, um, it, it's just so much more fun. You're, you you kind of enter like a different a different realm as a spender. And um, it's it's just interesting, but but yeah, um, I, I'm a culprit of that. If I ran into an issue, I would spend a lot of money to see if I could uh, get a champion, or 
during a fusion event, if I was short on shards, I would just go buy shards. But all these things add up, right? So those $30 purchases bump up, right? That's also why they they make it so that if you're a lower spender, you're put, you're put into a lower tier and then the more money that you spend, you're placed into a higher tier. And by that point, you've already opened that Pandora's box, you open up that gate and the water's already flowing in. So you're more than willing to pay the higher price instead of just paying the lower price. Granted, you still get the double rewards, but you know, the, the, the concept is still there. So, you know, the, the heavy financial investors, if you want to call invest them investors, the, the players with the psychological profiles that I talked about, um, they make up the Krakens and the whales, and it allows us to stay free to play. So really, we should be thanking them because without them lining Polarium's wallets, this game couldn't be free to play, right? But yeah, I just wanted to talk about the psychological traits such as um, completionist, uh, the need for achievement, escapism, desire for social validation, talk about all that and how their spending habits are influenced by game mechanics designed to maximize engagement and spending you know things like the the variable uh, reward schedules the limited time offers and the social pressures and understanding these psychological profiles and behaviors is crucial for recognizing the patterns in gaming addiction and the factors that drive high spending and free-to-play games but never forget that the number one best player in raid is always going to be your mom.